Hi there everyone, this is Adrian, the exercise specialist from the LeDuc Beaumont Devon Primary Care Network. I hope you all are doing well today. Uh, today I thought I would change things up a bit and I would uh, actually start a bit of a video series um, that I want to show you, show everyone. Um, so uh, uh, one video a week for the next uh, four weeks, um, I'm going to be showing an exercise program uh, that we call the Stand Up to Falls program. So it's a, it's a fall prevention program that um, I plan to run uh, in person um, moving forward. Uh, but um, I wanted to post, uh, post uh, the, uh, the exercise program, uh, one video each week, um, which goes in line with the program for the next four weeks. So the program uh, will run um, one time a week for the next four weeks. It is a fall prevention based program. As for the name, Stand Up to Falls. Great name, I know. <laughs> and um, each week uh, it, will, it, will, it, will, it will progressively become um, a, a little more difficult with a little shorter rest periods. So how it uh, in general works is uh, there's really, uh, there's really th uh, four phases depending on on, on how you think of it um, to run the program each day. So there's a warm up phase where you do a quick warm up with the body. Then there is um, a, an active balance phase where we do um, some uh, where we do uh, some more active kind of, of movements to work on your balance. Following that, well, we then move into the strengthening phase, which is the majority of the time used uh, will be on strengthening the body and movements associated with that. Uh, strength has a huge component in, uh, to someone's ability um, to maintain balance with structure and things along that. And the final stage is, is, a, is a sedentary balance stage, which, is, which will be used also as the, as the cool down for the workout. So we warm up, we do some more active balancing movements, then we do the strengthening com component where we do some, we do some exercises, and then we do um, some sedentary balance exercises at, at, at the end to work, on a, to work on just a quick cool down. Um, depending on, on how fast uh, you work through through the rest breaks, this could take anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes up to about 45 minutes, depending on kind of how you handle things. In person, uh, the program uh, will start with uh, with doing each each of the resistance training exercises for 30 seconds each, followed by between a 30 to 90 second rest period, depending on how the group is 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 is. Is actually doing. We do that for three sets and move on to each exercise, so on and so forth. Um, given um, the progressions, um, the first week, like I said, is 30 seconds. Then the second week, we move on to 45 seconds of exercise and uh, 45 to 60 seconds of rest. So you see the exercise time gets longer and the rest gets shorter and so on and so forth as you move week to week. Also, um, the balance exercises will be changing week over week uh, uh, to, to, give, to, to give everyone um, a plethora of different balance exercises that they can try. Because I want to help, um, to help really uh, to build up a, a portfolio for everyone um, for different exercises that you can work on for, for, for your balance. So each week, uh, there'll be longer exercise times and shorter rest periods. And each week, uh, we'll, uh, we'll have different active and stationary movements to work on your balance. Um, so as per usual, if you are new to physical activity, if you are returning to physical activity from a layoff, or if you have a medical condition that might make doing physical activity difficult, please consult with your physician before beginning any new exercise program. Also, especially, uh, for, especially um, when you're doing a, a, a balance program, it's very important um, to have someone else with you present to help you with the balancing, help you with the, help you with, uh, the actual um, structuring and the, and the training of the, of the program. Um, last thing we want is to someone to have concerns with their balance, try to work on their balance by themselves and for them to have a fall. So please always have someone else there, else, uh, else there with you to, to assist you, to make sure, to make sure you don't have, have any falls. Um, also have something like, like a, a wall close or a chair close. It's also very helpful so you can hold on to and help, and help balance yourselves. Uh, some of these exercises, um, uh, we do incorporate the use, the, the use of a chair, so this is something that I, I would recommend. If you have a chair with armrests on it, that would make it um, a, 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 little, a, a little easier also. Furthermore, um, to each of these exercises and the balancing exercises a, a, as well, um, there is a, a wide variety and range of functionality for people who actually perform balancing exercises. 
Um, so for that, uh, for each of these exercises that I am showing today, uh, we, I do have progressions and regressions to each of them. So what that means is, is there's harder variations to these exercises if you are doing them very well, and there's easier variations to these exercises if you, if you are not doing them well. And I, I, I likely will make a video in the future showing, showing the progressions and regressions to each of them necessary. Okay. So I'll be posting one of these videos a, 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 a week for the next four weeks going over these. And then hopefully this can be used as an adjunct um, to the in-person Stand Up Stand Up to Falls program that I plan on running in the future. So um, I, think, I think now is a good time to begin. So we'll, so we'll start off with a quick warm up. So for the warm up, uh, we're, gonna be seated in, we're gonna be seated in our chair. Uh, we'll take our, 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 our head, we'll slowly roll it side to side. If this makes you dizzy to do the rolling, what you, what you can do is you, 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 you can take your head, you can twist slowly and back, twist slowly and back, you can go dip slowly and back, dip slowly and back, twist, twist, dip, dip. From there, we're gonna take our arms. We're gonna do some backward circles. As Coach Luna comes to join me, some backward circles, and we're gonna do forward circles. Then, if we take our hands, give ourselves a hug. We're gonna twist side to side, just a little bit here. Just side to side, nice and controlled. Once again, if this makes you, you dizzy, just go very slowly, twist, and back, twist, and back. For some people, if it's easier, if you can find a spot on the wall, just stare and twist, and twist, twist, and twist, can help, to, can, can help you out, out, out with the dizziness also. Um, so from there, uh, what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold on to our chair, we're gonna slowly extend each leg out, Just get some blood flowing into our legs, into our knees. All right. Perfect. So a lot of these exercises I'm going to I'm going to show you guys today. I have shown in previous videos before, but not kind of in this order or this kind of a paradigm. Um, and also, I have a separate a separate warm up video on the channel. A, a couple of of them actually, if you want to try some other warm ups as well. But that's just a very quick, very basic kind of seated, um, seated warm up for, uh, to begin the program. So, um, so now we're going to move on to uh, the active balance portion or the dynamic balance portion. Once again, all these exercises have progressions and and regressions to them, uh, which I will explain in a, in a separate video. So for the active balance ones. Uh, for today, I will show all these from a standing position, and I will and I will go through them for you. And we will try doing each of them for 30 seconds. So, first one, we're gonna take a chair. We're gonna have the chair at our side here, and, we, and, we're, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna just start off with a very easy, which is feet together, and we're gonna do a lean to each uh, to each side, left and right. So you can hold onto a chair if you need it. If you don't, that 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 is totally fine. So to so, so show you guys, we're gonna hand, you can I, I, either go hands down at your side or across wherever you feel more comfortable. A lot of, of, of people like like their hands at their sides. What we do is as we lean over to the side. If you want to make this one more difficult, you can always put out an arm and up. Other side, lean towards the side and up. If that is if, if it is too difficult, on the chair, lean. And lean. To, if, 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 if you want to go further, you, you can be upright, put your arm up to the side, and lean your body out that way. You see, I'm not really rounding over this way, I'm just trying to stay upright and lean this time. Make it, it makes it a little harder, same thing. Lean, or you can hold on, lean, and lean. So that's another way um, that you can do the first one there. Second one um, it is, is called the tandem steps, which I have shown in a previous video here. So, we are, so what, uh, you're, 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 what you're gonna do is you're gonna take each step and you're gonna step directly in front of your other foot so you're in a straight line. See from the side here, directly front, directly back. Same, same, same thing here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stay like this and we're gonna hold this balance for 10 to 15 seconds. So you see, it's, it's, it's not too easy at times. So we're gonna stay here 
There's a hole like this. That's why you have the chair here if you need it, right? If, if you lose your balance. Some people like them out here. Try to find some more on the wall. And once you've hit the 10 or 15 second mark, then you're gonna switch legs. Put your other leg forward. Same, same thing. And then you check on your time. And we'll hold that there. So you can hold this for the 10, 15 seconds. If, if you start to lose your balance, you have that, that chair there to support you. Perfect. Now the last active balance exercise um, that we, uh, that we are, are going to do is going to be the bug stomp. One of my favorite, one of my favorite personal balance exercises that I always recommend for, 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 for people is the bug stomp. The bug stomp is a very um, specific and a very good movement to do because it, it totally mimics what, um, what you'd expect to happen in, in a situation where you might have a trip or a fall. So a lot of times you'll be walking and you snag your foot and boom, your leg goes out and you have to catch yourself. So when you catch yourself, it's also, it's also very similar to stomping a bug. So what we can do is, is we can work on the action of trying to stomp a bug in different angles to work on catching our balance. So how, how I like to think of it is trying to stomp a bug in five directions on each leg. So they're, they're, they're directly out in front of you, it's on an angle, it's on a side, there's, there's on an angle behind you, and there's directly behind you. It's similar to what's called the balance excursion test, which I've run on, which I, 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 do, I do run sometimes on patients. And, and you can make this one harder by, you know, applying some more force into it. Okay. Boom, 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 and boom. Or you can make it more difficult by taking bigger steps. Boom, boom. The sound effects are optional. You don't have to make sound effects. Boom, boom, and boom. Um, so that's an exercise I generally will get people to do for, for, for 30 seconds in total. So it'll just be, and you just keep going, you step out nice and far, and you catch yourself. And then with your other leg. You can go as fast or as slow as you deem necessary. And you just go for 30 seconds. So that, that's a fantastic movement, and it's a great way to really work on specific movements. And you can do the exercise for it as, as long as you want. As I see you guys uh, for today, um, just to kind of keep things concise, I'm, I'm not going to take uh, the entire rest period that I'm going to usually do between each exercise because I don't think you guys want to uh, just have me here, um, you know, silent for 30, 30 to 90 seconds just resting between exercises. So I'm going to move from each one to, to each one. But if you need to take a break, just, to just you know, pause the video and take a necessary break and, and then continue. The first week, like I said, the expected rest between the main exercises is 60 to 90 seconds. Between the balance exercises, it's as long as, as you deem necessary, but um, shorter the better. If you are starting to feel lightheaded or, or dizzy, then take a longer break or completely stop the exercise at that time. But I'm just going to move through everything today because I, I want you guys to see them all. So those are the active and the dynamic balance um, and the dynamic balance portion for week one. They will progressively get more difficult as the weeks progress. Um, but those are just three basic simple ones, uh, simple ones that you can do. So now we'll move on to the strengthening component of the of the workout routine, which is going to be um, which is going to be you know the longest um, and the most realistically important um, aspect of the workout, and why we, and why we apply uh, the majority of our time and effort towards it. Um, to give you guys a little bit of, of an example. <clears throat> Uh, we do the active balancing exercises before the strengthening exercises um, because uh, the active balancing helps to warm you up further so you do better at the strengthening exercises. If you were to do the strengthening exercises before the active exercises, uh, then you would be weaker after doing the strengthening exercises, obviously, and you would likely have a bit of a difficult time doing the balancing exercises because you'll be you know, weaker from a muscular standpoint. So we do things um, uh, in consideration of uh, uh, what's what is important um, in terms of, of hierarchy and then also um, what order we can do things from a functional standpoint. We, so we will we do this in a certain order for uh, for these reasons. <clears throat> so first exercise of the day is going to be the chair squat. For this exercise, uh, like I've said, um, there are progressions and regressions to all of these. So um, I won't be showing a lot of those today. That those will all be done in a separate video. But we will start with the we will start with the main exercise today, which is um, a chair squat. 
Um, there's lots of variations to it, and I will show those, like I said, separately. So those exercises will be done for the 30 seconds, and then it would usually be expected you would take a 30 to 90 second break. Um, I'll, I'll probably take a five or 10 second break just to keep things moving, and that'll also give you time to, to pause the video if you need to take a longer break, so, so on and so forth. So for the basic chair squat, we're gonna be chest upright, feet roughly shoulder width up, up, up apart. You can either cross or go out in front, or hands on your sides to help. If you have arm rest, you can help yourself get up if you need it. And then we're gonna come up and then back down. As you see, I'm not coming up and dropping. That's not what we want. Controlled up, controlled down. If it helps, you can think of you know two or three seconds up, two or three seconds down, if that helps you. So it's a very focused movement. This is you know, this is you know getting up off of the floor, some sometimes depending on the position you're in. This is getting up off of a toilet, out of bed, off of a couch, so on and so forth. So a very important movement. So we will begin with the 30 seconds of this right now. For round one. You see nice and controlled. Nice and control. It's a great total lower but lower but lower body movement. As Coach Luna comes in to make sure that I'm doing all the, all the work. And time. So there's 30 seconds. We'll take a five or ten second break, and then, and, and then we'll move on to round two. Uh, like I said, usually uh, this would be done uh, with a 30 to 90 second rest, kind of kind of depending on how everyone in the class is 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 doing. All right, so let's begin round two. Really focus on sitting back and gently sitting down into the chair. Ten more seconds. And time. Good job. So we'll take an, another five or ten seconds rest here, and then we'll do and, and then we will we will do the final round of, of this. And like I said, as each week 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 progresses, uh, we will be doing this for a longer and longer and lo longer and longer time period. And and as we pro progress that, we hopefully progress to harder progressions of the movement if you are able if you are able to do so. So final round and begin. So the final set of three. Break your one halfway. Great work, almost there. Awesome. So that's the first exercise. Uh, very important exercise. I always like to start off with the squatting movement. That's probably the best bang for your buck movement overall. <sighs> it uh, feels good. All right, next movement we're going to move into is the standing leg curl movement. So, this one, you will take your, 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 your chair, whatever you are using to help. Um, I would recommend having something to hold on to this because it, it will make it easier because we are doing single leg stuff here. So for this movement, you'll be up. Well, we're going to work the hamstring muscles. So you're going to be, up, you're going to be upright. You're going to take one leg off the ground here. And you're going to straight bring it up as high as you can and down. And down. As you see, I'm not moving my upper leg. My knee stays relatively still. I'm just controlled, bringing my heel up and down. I'm not going crazy. Up and down. Up and down. This one for 30 seconds. And I switch legs. And switch. Let's do 30 seconds. You see, Coach, Coach Luna is making sure that I'm, I'm not skimping out and my form is, is staying correct. Almost there. You see, it's very good to be able to bounce your class as you, you know, wobbling around while you're doing this. It's a good stationary movement. You isolate that hamstring muscle. All right, usually we would take a bit of a break right now, but I'm going to move right into the second set. So, set two. If you have to pause the video there to take a break, that's totally fine. 
like I said, I doubt you guys want to uh, see me resting and have this video be over an hour long because of that. So we'll just keep going. 30 seconds. Nice and controlled. Nice and controlled. And switch legs. This will be the end of round two. Awesome, almost there, 10 more seconds. And time. All right, so once again, you could take a, you could take a, a, a little break here if you feel necessary, uh, 30 to 90 seconds, wherever you deem uh, to make yourself feel like you're ready to go again. We will start right away, further away, the third and the final round. Really working on all these hamstring muscles. This is a great exercise to help isolate the hamstring muscles, which is a group of, two, of three muscles there. Known as your semi tendinosis, your semi membranosus, and your and your bicep femoris. And they really focus on this movement for the most part. What is called leg flexion. All right, and switch legs. Final time we're doing these today. Great movement here. Almost there. And time. So that's the second exercise. Moving on to the third exercise of the six total leg exercises is going to be the standing leg leg abduction. So that one, if you're standing upright, uh, you're going to have your supporting surface here. Uh, I will move this in front of me just to um, make it a, a little easier on myself. You're going to be upright here, uh, or you can keep on the side, whatever works for you. You're standing upright, you're going to keep your one leg straight, bring straight out and back. So you see, it's a great exercise for working on the balance on your one leg also. You can always do it, you know, without holding on, but that, that gets pretty difficult. So I definitely would recommend holding on. So we're here, out, oh, and then, out, oh, and then, out, oh, and then, out, oh, oh. Once again, I'm not going crazy. Staying upright, out, control, and just working on some of the outer muscles of your hip. Notice your hip abductor muscles, A, B, D, abductor. Five more seconds. And time. So this is why usually I'll have the chair out in front of, of me, but I'll put it on this side just for uniformity's sake. Same thing, 30 more seconds. Other side. Fantastic movement. You're working on a ton of little muscles inside your hip complex here. And all, all these little muscles, uh, they don't get worked a whole lot. So it's a fantastic, easy, relatively safe movement to do. Almost there. And time. So we'll switch back to this side. If you need to take a, a little break there, feel free, totally fine. Get back into it. Not only is this working these hip muscles, it also works the, it also works the hip muscles um, that are on the ground actually working on the stabilization and, and a single leg balance. It's fantastic for that. And time. Good job. All right. Moving on to the left side again to complete round two. Position and up. At this one, we got one more round of, round of, of this. Good job, everyone, and time. 
it works. So you feel free to take, you know, 30 to 90 seconds if you feel you need it here. Like I've indicated previously, if this was to be run in person in class, I would be taking that length of a break for, 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 for people. Likely closer to that 60 to 90 second time for the first week. But those times would shorten as the weeks pro as the weeks did progress. So final round, 30 seconds each, and begin. work everyone final round of this this can really start to burn after a while I'm feeling it that is for sure and time all right final leg for the final round today so everyone get into position and begin final 30 seconds Good work, almost there. 10 more seconds. And time. Awesome. So feel free to give yourselves a little bit of a shakeout. Like I said, if you have if you have issues with your balance, there are progressions and regressions to all of these that I will show you separately. So moving on to the next movement, I'm be working on planter and dorsiflexion. So this movement, you will want something to hold us on to. So a, a chair, a rail, something like that. I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really recommend a wall because there is risk of you going backwards. So you want something to, that they are really able to support yourself firmly on with this. So with this, we're, we're, we're going to be alternating through two movements, which is plantar flexion, which is you're going up on your tippy toes, and dorsiflexion, where you're rolling back onto your heels, trying to get your feet off the ground. Okay. And we'll be doing this one for the 30 seconds. So let's do it nice, nice, slow, and control, and begin. So you go up, plant flexion, back, dorsiflexion. Up on your toes, up on your heels. Up on your toes, up on your heels. Up on your toes, up on your heels. Toes, heels. Toes. Heels. Last one. Toes and heels. Great job. So that's the first round. We'll take a, a quick little break. What is great about that is when you're doing plantar flexions, when you're up on your toes, it's great working those calf muscles, the muscles on, on the back of your leg there. And then when you're doing dorsiflexion, it's actually working the muscles on the front of your shin, your anterior, your anterior tibialis, which a lot of people don't really think about. But it's a very, it's a very imp, 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 important muscle. If you ever heard of someone getting something like shin splints or things like that, it's, it can oftentimes be due to a weak um, anterior, anterior tibialis, which is a muscle that, that, that inserts right on the outside of the knee here, and it goes all the way down. So it's an important muscle to work, and that gets worked through, through the dorsiflexion. So with this movement, you bring your toes up. So let's start round two and begin. Toes and heels. Toes and heels. Toes and heels. There's often an exercise I try to prescribe for people that are dealing with some plantar, flat, plantar fasciitis as well. Toes and heels. Toes. Heels and toes and time. So that is round two. I'll just give it a quick little break. So once again, take your rest. If you feel the need to, pause the video. We're just gonna keep going. So toes and heels. Toes and heels. Toes and heels. I see I'm not going crazy like this. It's controlled. A couple seconds up, a couple seconds down. A couple seconds up, a couple seconds down. 10 more seconds, we're almost there. And back, and back. Toes and heels. Awesome. So the final main exercise that I'm going to show you guys today is the wall push-up. I've, I've shown this exercise in a, a previous video before. 
Um, a wall push-up is a fantastic movement because it's very functional for upper body strength. Being able to push yourself away from something like the floor or a wall or someone, I guess, depending. Um, and, it's, and it's a total upper body movement. It works, you know, the muscles in your chest, the shoulder muscles, and your tricep muscles. So these muscles, these muscles, and these muscles back here. It's a fantastically important movement, especially if you think of things like if you're on the ground and you gotta push yourself up off of the ground. I have a separate video on here um, um, that actually goes through uh, my uh, that actually goes through the six steps of how to get up from a, from a fall. And being able to push your upper body up off the floor is a very important aspect um, as part of stage one and stage and and stage two of that. If you haven't watched that video on the channel, I, ha I, I highly I highly recommend it. Um, it should be pretty recent as of last, as of a week previous to this one on the channel. So please check, uh, please check that one out. Um, so wall push-ups are a fantastic movement, and there's progressions from you know making it harder to doing. You can do push-ups on the ground from your knees or from your toes for a standard push-up, the different grips, or all the way up um, to where you're pretty much straight up with the wall, and, and it, it's very easy. You can incorporate a band, making it more difficult or, or, or more easy, so on and so forth. So to first show you guys here, what I'm going to want, as, as you can see, I'm against the wall here. My, my arms are roughly shoulder width apart. My elbows follow roughly under my wrists. If you want to make it more difficult, the farther out you go, you want to make it easier, straight up you go. If you're straight up here, there's no real resistance at all. So I, I, I wouldn't really, really recommend being straight up. But a, 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 a bit of an angle here is perfect. So we'll do this for, for 30 seconds and begin down and up, down and up, down and up, down and up. Be nice and controlled here, Just nice and controlled, nice and controlled. Almost there, and time. Good job. So that's the first round. So, if you need a rest, feel free to feel free to take the necessary rest. So this could just let you guys know this. This is the final exercise of the resistance training portion of the workout for the day. So I will start right into round two. If you need to take the rest, like I said, pause the video, and we will begin. Down and up. Down. two for for the day so we will take just a quick little breather and then we'll do one final round of that as you see I'm doing this I'm not overly arched or rounded over you want to stay roughly straight line so roughly straight if you were to draw a straight line from my shoulders to my hips to my knees to my ankles roughly a straight line it's not it's it isn't going to going to be perfect but we do not want to be s-shaped we do not want to be over arched like a backwards or like a C so Final round, 30 seconds and begin. The final resistance training movement of the day, working on that upper body strength. Final 30 seconds, nice and controlled, 10 seconds left. Nice and controlled. And time. So great job everyone. So that's the last resistance training movement. Now we'll move on to a bit of a cool down. And for the cool down, all it's gonna be is a couple basic seated balance exercises. So yes, there are plenty of seated balance exercises out there. I actually have a previous video on the channel where I go over an example of a few of them there. So feel free to check it out. But uh, we're going to incorporate a couple of seated balance exercises into our cool down and keep it nice and short and quick, but also effective and beneficial for your balance. So the first one that we are, are, are going to be doing is just is just a seated sideways sideways lean and straight up lean, and and the whole time we're working on our breathing at the same time. 
So nice deep breaths in and deep breaths out. So what, we'll, what, what we will do first is we're going to be sitting upright. We're going to take our arms up, up above our heads here. If you can get your arms up, 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 up above your head, fantastic. That's okay. If you can't, wherever you can get them to, that, that is okay. We're going to start up here. Just we'll take two, two big deep breaths in and out, in and out. Now what we're going to do is we're going to lean over to the side. So we're going to get some balance in our chair over there. Lean, breathe in and out, in and out. For some people, if it's easier, you can hold on to your chair, reach your one arm out and then lean and then breathe in and out in and out and then same thing other side breathe in and out in and out once again or you can do it this way in and out in and out and the final one for today that we'll be doing is going to be the seated scoot or the lean to each each side this one you can go hands on your knees if you, if you need to support hands in your chair or arms if you have it. So watch out, girl. Coach Luna is in the way for this one. You guys, you guys need need to be you guys need to need to be 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 be, be able to see, see see the hips for this one. Clearly, Coach Luna wants to get in, in, involved. Luna, over here. Oh, sweet. See, she's always excited excited for the for the exercises. So, for the for the seated scoot, I want you seated more on the front of your chair here. And what you are, are going to do is you're going to lean to one side. So if you look under my leg, um, this entire leg and my glute and everything is off of the chair. So you're going to lean over. And if you can raise that leg up a, a, a little bit, fantastic. If you need to hold on, totally fine. So we're just going to lean and scoot up to this side. And two deep breaths in and out, in and out. And then switch sides, scoot to the other side. Hold on if you need it. Leg up, in, and out, in, and out. So that's the full workout for today. Uh, we went through a basic warm up. Then we went through, through some active and some basic and basic dynamic balance and movement. Followed by the strength training component, and we finished off with uh, some sedentary balance slash 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 cool down movement. So as I've said, um, each exercise uh, for the first week starts with uh, 30 seconds of exercise, followed by between 30 to 90 seconds of rest, depending on how on how you feel. Um, that is how I would handle things um, um, in, in my group, um, depending on how on how everyone is is doing. Because um, I you want to be able to strike a nice balance between effort, which requires shorter rest periods, but also effective movements. So if I'm having everyone do very short rest periods, it might be very hard, but the quality of the exercises for the people will go down. And what I want for people is progression and quality movements. So it's about the, the nice balance where we got to balance your effort with your quality. And that sometimes that takes a, a, a long time to get the hang of and figure out, you know, what people need, but uh, just comes with, you know, you know, working on it, working on it and working on your practice. Uh, your form and your uh, ability to do the movements is what's most important for here for me. Um, so I, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I will be posting um, week two of this of this program for next week, which will be with you know you know longer exercise times, shorter recoveries, so on, so on, so forth. Um, and I will be posting a video uh, uh, later this week uh, that goes over the actual progressions and the regressions um, to each of these exercises. So I I so I hope that'll be helpful for you guys as well. Um, for the five exercises, um, like the video will 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 primarily go over the, the 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 progressions and the regressions for the resistance training exercises. As the balance exercises, I'll always show different versions of that while we're doing it. But uh, uh, I do have many progressions and regressions for the actual resistance training, which is the meat and potatoes of this program. So it'll progress over the next uh, four weeks here. Um, as per usual, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them down below. Uh, please like and subscribe um, and, and subscribe um, uh, to the YouTube channel. I hope these are helpful. Uh, as usual, my name is Adrian. I'm the exercise specialist at the Leduc Beaumont Devon Primary Care Network. Thank you so much and have a great day.